My name is Robert Laird, as Javier said, thank you very much for organising another one of these good events. Um, so I'll be talking about, as I say, creating a better world with biochar and um, I'll just give you a quick rundown. Um, carbon offset zone, uh, we offset carbon footprints and um, for voluntary and compliance markets. We also uh, have technologies. My history for over 10 years is in biochar and technology. So uh, that's what this presentation is all about. So this is fighting global warming with fire. The carbon cycle we'll start with, just I know some of you already know about it, but um, just to make sure everybody's on the same page. Carbon present in the atmosphere is absorbed by plants during photosynthesis. And some of these plants are then consumed by animals and the carbon gets assimilated into their bodies. When these animals and plants die, carbon is released back into the atmosphere during the decomposition. That's the normal natural cycle and that's carbon neutral. Some of the carbon that's not released back into the atmosphere eventually becomes stored as fossil fuel. If these fossil fuels are then burned for man-made activities, they release more carbon back into the atmosphere, causing the greenhouse effect, which is carbon positive, which we know as global warming. The biochar cycle, on the other hand, the same plants and animals can die, but if they're pyrolyzed in a unit like ours, then 50% of the carbon is captured, stored for a long time. Um, and this helps reduce the atmospheric carbon in the atmosphere. Uh, this is carbon negative. Uh, some of the other products apart from the biochar, uh, syngas and bio oil, wood vinegar. Um, we use all of those products, uh, which is better than releasing them back into the atmosphere. So overall, there's a net reduction in atmospheric CO2. Pyrolysis, again, some of you already know everything about this, but just talking to the masses, pyrolysis is the thermal decomposition of biomass in the absence of oxygen. The flammable gases that are released are then cooled and reintroduced into the firebox, and that drives the process. The liquid fraction is also collected and used later. Uh, we use it as a pest deterrent, a biostimulant, an accelerant, um, there's many uses. Uh, what remains is biochar, which is mostly carbon. That is carbon negative. This is a little graphic showing a tree. It draws down carbon from the atmosphere. We put it into the machine. We capture the liquids. We use the flammable components to drive the process. So no fossil fuels are used, no electricity is used, not even a battery. So it's just using the waste to drive itself. This creates biochar, which is a stable form of carbon. And then we return that back into the ground. Uh, this grows more plants, sucking down more carbon from the atmosphere. And so the cycle continues. Um, a lot of people who already know about biochar in the literature, it all talks about 7,000 years of storage capacity, at least. Um, being Australian, I know better uh, because we have the oldest living culture in the world in Australia. The Aborigines, um, that culture is 70,000 years old. And their cooking sites where they've caught fish, they cook it next to the river with a fire. So there's man-made charcoal left. That charcoal ends up over time buried in the ground and scientists, geologists and archeologists, anthropologists, they've all studied Australian soils and found these, what they call middens, where the Aboriginal people have been cooking on. And there's carbon found in the ground that dates back 70,000 years in this country and that's man-made charcoal. So that's a game changer for the biochar industry. Let's not 
bother talking about 7,000 years, that's nothing. 70,000 years can be proven. So this is going to be a little short video, which will tell you a little bit more about what we do. Um, it'll show some of the machines that I've designed um, and they're being sold and built all over the world. Um, there's one running somewhere in the world at all times. Um, and here we go. You can ask questions at the end. Revolutionizing waste conversion with efficient mobile pyrolysis technology. Carbon Offset Zone is a pioneering company that specializes in designing and deploying efficient mobile pyrolysis technology. With a strong focus on sustainability and climate change mitigation, the company has developed an innovative solution that efficiently converts waste biomass into valuable biochar and wood vinegar. Having been involved in biochar research and development for over 10 years, Carbon Offset Zone have designed affordable mobile pyrolysis units that are compact, efficient, and highly versatile. These self-contained units can be easily transported to various locations, enabling on-site waste conversion. The units maximize biochar and wood vinegar production while minimizing energy consumption and emissions. Carbon Offset Zone's mobile pyrolysis units excel in extracting biochar of exceptional quality from a wide range of biomass waste sources. By subjecting the biomass to a controlled, low-oxygen environment, the units ensure efficient conversion, retaining maximum carbon content within the biochar. This high-quality biochar has proven benefits for soil health, carbon sequestration, and sustainable agriculture. In addition to biochar, Carbon Offset Zone's mobile pyrolysis units efficiently extract wood vinegar as a valuable byproduct. Wood vinegar is a natural and organic liquid concentrate enriched with various organic compounds and essential plant nutrients. It finds applications in organic gardening, livestock management, pest control, and as a potent natural soil conditioner. 5 Benefits and Environmental Impacts from Carbon Offset Zones Mobile Pyrolysis Units 1. Waste Management Solution Carbon Offset Zones Mobile Pyrolysis Technology provides a sustainable and efficient waste management solution by converting biomass waste into useful products. This diverts waste from landfills, reducing methane emissions and contributing to a circular economy approach. 2. Carbon Sequestration and Climate Change Mitigation Through the production of biochar, Carbon Offset Zone facilitates the long-term sequestration of carbon, mitigating greenhouse gas emissions and contributing to climate change mitigation efforts. 3. Soil Health and Fertility The application of biochar and wood vinegar improves soil health by enhancing water retention, nutrient cycling, and microbial activity. This contributes to sustainable agriculture, increased crop yields, and reduced dependence on synthetic fertilizers and chemicals. 4. Local Economic Opportunities Carbon Offset Zones technology creates local economic opportunities by enabling on-site waste conversion, job creation in biomass sourcing and unit operation, and the production and marketing of biochar and wood vinegar. It promotes rural development and fosters economic prosperity in biomass-rich regions. 5. Resource Efficiency By converting waste biomass into valuable products, Carbon Offset Zone's mobile pyrolysis technology maximizes resource utilization. It reduces the need for fossil fuel-based inputs, such as synthetic fertilizers, and promotes resource efficiency in agriculture and other industries. Carbon Offset Zone's innovative mobile pyrolysis technology presents a game-changing solution for waste biomass conversion. The efficient production of biochar and wood vinegar allows for sustainable waste management, carbon sequestration, and improved soil health. By driving local economic opportunities, reducing greenhouse gas emissions, and promoting resource efficiency, Carbon Offset Zone is at the forefront of climate change mitigation and sustainable development. So now there's a picture of 
biochar under an electron microscope. Uh, this is grapefruit, um, just a branch from grapefruit tree. And as you can see, it's peppered with lots of tiny little holes that not only draw water in, but also ho hold microbes. They house microbes and the microbes multiply when they're happy, they move in. And every 24 hours, there's 10 times as many as there was the day before. And the microbes themselves help move nutrients around, um, which when it's around the roots, makes the soil around the roots much more fertile. Um, mycorrhizal fungi also grows through biochar, uh, which also helps transport nutrients to the plants. Um, certainly when used with wood vinegar, um, this is a picture of a couple of different samples that I've collected in my unit. Um, some of them are just mixed species. Some of them are specific to one species at a time. Uh, one of those is even um, municipal solid waste, so done pallets, that sort of thing. Um, so you can use anything. I've done animal bones as well. It all makes charcoal. If it was ever alive, it'll become charcoal. Um, wood vinegar is almost unknown in the Western world, um, but it's a fantastic product with hundreds of potential uses. Um, one of the exciting things for me is it brings down the cluster value of water, which means it makes the water runnier. So where it would normally have a, a ball of water sitting um, that can't penetrate a small hole, um, with the addition of a tiny little bit of wood vinegar, uh, it will run a lot easier um, and be drawn up by the plants much more effectively, making the effectiveness of the fertilizer even better. So you need less fertilizer if you're using wood vinegar as well. So that's an exciting move. Uh, it's also being used in animal husbandry in place of antibiotics. It's an organic product um, and that's better for human health. If the animal ends up being consumed by humans, we don't have to take on those antibiotics, weakening our own immune systems. Um, it also goes a very long way. Um, it's usually diluted approximately 200 to one with water, um, even up to 500 to one in some applications. Uh, so it's a magic product in itself and it's certainly worth collecting. So that's it for my slideshow. Uh, we've got a bit of time, I believe. So I'm happy to answer any questions anybody else has. Um, and I'm happy to talk. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Robert Lyde. Uh, 